Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Anton Anderson, who's the CEO of Elite Resource Team. Anton, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man, I'm really uh, looking forward to talking to you. I've followed your work for a while. Love what you're doing with creating uh, a blueprint for strategic alliances. And uh, it's exciting to be able to unpack that a bit. But get us started with your story. What's your entrepreneurial journey been like to this point in your career? Yeah, so came from more of a traditional family, uh, government employees, and somewhere just got bit by the entrepreneurial bug. Uh And it happened pretty early, you know, kind of like the Tom Sawyer, uh, Huck Finn, where you would hire the neighbors for four bucks an hour and your dad would pay you five bucks an hour to paint the uh, garage or some, that was kind of me from the early days. And you just fell in love for one reason or another with the financial services space. So I kind of pursued being an advisor for a number of years, started at Smith Barney, went to a smaller firm after that. And, uh, somewhere along the way, just kind of realized as much as I loved the space and working with advisors, I was really kind of that entrepreneur slash educator at yeah. heart. And so kind of married the two in tw- late 2014, we started a co-founded elite resource team and later became the CEO. Basically, as, as you alluded to, you know, we train financial advisors, insurance agents, uh, CPAs, attorneys, how to form more more functioning, better collaborating teams to ultimately deliver more proactive and holistic planning to clients. You know, I love that progression because you you kind of got to you got to cut your teeth in corporate America. You know, yeah, I mean, I feel like yeah. that. I mean, you know, how about the people that come out of college and go, I'm going to be a consultant and they go work for some consulting firm. That's fine. You might have a training program, but you really haven't like learned from the school of hard knocks and learn really the processes. So you did that uh, in the corporate world. Love it. But you had that bug in you and uh, and you and you moved on. And I feel like um, you probably could point to a thousand um, uh, trainers in our industry of financial services that say, oh, to succeed as a financial advisor, you need to. Mm -hmm. And many of them will go cold call or visit or Mm -hmm. hand. I mean, come on. But, you know, at the end of the day, people like to do business with a who they know, like, and trust. And I always, uh, I literally um, have consulted with the Small Business Development Center um, for the last 10, 12 years. And when I talk to some of those clients, I say, here's the deal. You need to know how to describe your products and services. So the messaging, your competitive advantage, you need to know who your target audience is, of course. And then to really throw grease in the fire, you need to have strategic alliances that already have the know, like, and trust with your target audience. And in your world, it is, hello, financial professionals, financial advisors. Boy, to get to that premier client, are you going to go door knocking? Are you going to go cold calling? Are you going to do spam emails? The best way to do it is to go to one of the respected, most respected professions out there, which is a CPA, and form not just hook a brother up and send me a referral. Um, (laughs) It's let's form a strategic alliance that's mutually beneficial for all parties. So talk a little bit about why financial advisors and CPA should work together. So I kind of look at it like this, poor, average, great. And the poor advisors, poor CPAs, they're the adversaries, right? They're the ones that throw mud at each other. They can't play nicely in the same sandbox. The CPA thinks the advisor is just a salesman trying to get to the clients. The advisor just thinks the CPA is a deal killer and worried about covering their own butt. The average advisor and CPA cooperate. And that's kind of the what I like to refer to as the outdated referral model. That's like the ones that you see traditionally in the industry where yeah, they have an open line of communication, but there's really no collaboration going on. They cooperate. Right. They both play their own roles. But and if you offensive. beat their doors down hard enough, maybe they flip you a little, you know, more yeah, so. Yeah, you get yeah. a little bit of this. You get right. a little bit of that at the end of the year. You know, you're kind of trading referrals. But collaborating is very, very different than cooperating. Yeah. Collaborating is working together through a process where you're both bringing your own skills to the table, your own insights you know, your own value, your own opinions. And you're saying, how do we work together to create the best outcome 
for this client. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're literally, we're on the same team. We're working through a process together. And then we take it one step further and say, Hey, you might be the, the Michael Jordan of financial advisory. I might be, you know, the LeBron James of tax planning, but that's still only tax planning and financial planning. What about the business advisory services? What about the legal services? What about the risk management or mitigation? And then you go, Oh, so if we acknowledge that clients, especially high net worth clients, business owners, but but even the mass affluent, like they need more than just financial planning and and tax work done. They they need what is a team of professionals or the opportunity of a team of professionals collaborating on their behalf rather than just this like hodgepodge of different advisors. Yeah that the the client has to go to and get information and try to assimilate and decide what's best. So that's really where this team concept I think thrives. Yes. Is when you can actually come in, you leave the egos at the door, you say let's create a proactive planning team. You know, at the heart of that team is going to be the advisor and the CPA. And that's because the majority of work that clients yeah. need are covered, you know, by those two professionals, but that's only the majority. You know, once you get out of those areas, now we should leverage the expertise of other professionals, not try to become the the advanced legal planners and the ta- and the you know advanced tax planners. Yes, stay in your the, lane. You want to stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Focus on what, what you do well, and then have other professionals that you can bring in, not refer out to, but bring in to your planning process to allow them to excel in their lane. And that ultimately, like if you go back in the day and you look at a true family office for a client that's got, you know, 500 million net worth, a billion net worth, like that's why they created these family offices. But the average small business owner, mass affluent client, they can't afford to have all those professionals under one roof. So this is really, I think, the culmination of the advisor CPA forming a proactive planning team, leveraging a virtual family office. That combination of those factors is what we call the team-based model. And I, I, I think it's, you know, in this day and age, things are more complex than another. I think that gives us the perfect, you know, the perfect recipe to, for delivering ultimate value to a client. And yeah, then because, at the end of the day. Because who wins in this? That's right. That's everybody. where I was going. Yeah. I mean, because because if you think about it, um, everyone's favorite radio station is what? Have you heard of this before? A little, <laughs> little pop quiz. W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Is that yes. So, yes, yep, yes, yep. yes. All right. So it's like, okay, you're talking to the CPA and they're like, what's in it for me? And you're like, well, and the client's like, what's in it for everybody is winning. And you everybody know, you wins. mentioned the outdated referral model. When you were describing that, it made me think of of something else. Isn't it true that you probably discovered this years ago? And this is why you created this whole ethos and ecosystem, which is, hey, uh, Mr. or Ms. CPA, I'm a financial planner and I would love to receive. So I've got some referrals to send you. Well, at some point, the financial planner doesn't have enough referrals to send to the CPA to match and have that reciprocity of what they want back from them because they're just running it. You know, they can't do that. So why not bring to them this massive value? You're embedded in this relationship. And the the um the model that you're bringing to them is expanding 10, 20, 30 X. So it's it's now not a tit for tat referral and I'm waiting for your referral back. It is, let me show you what I can install into our both of our businesses and look at what we can build together. And your clients win, you win. I can show you how to do more in less time. And we're all just really happy serving and doing the best for our clients. You, Mike, you nailed it. Like it. I, I want to replay that clip so people understand it. And <laughs> the may. reason why advisors don't necessarily understand why CPAs aren't excited to work with them is the number one issue that CPAs have, it's not not getting new clients. That's not, the problem is bandwidth and time. Yeah. So actually when an advisor is saying, hey, I have a new client, you can charge $400 for a tax return or $600 for, t-, they're like, I already have 400 of those clients. My yeah. problem is the fact that I'm working seven hours a day, 12 hours a week during tax season and my spouse or my kids, I haven't seen in three weeks. Like, so how is your referral helping them? It's not. So that's an opportunity for synergy, right? One plus one equals three. How do we do that? We come together, we provide a experience that creates more value, a client's happier. You know what people are willing to pay for? Value. If you have a better outcome, you can charge more money. 
People you know, are it's almost like if that financial advisor happened to get a CPA on the phone and and start talking about this, it's almost like that CPA is rolling their eyes going, here it is again, you know, yeah. gimme, 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 right? But if you can flip the script, so so here's something very interesting. At the time that you and I are talking right this minute, one hour ago, I interviewed a really, really high level um, consultant who works in uh, the realm of uh, he literally his clients are 50 million to two billion dollars. Mm. He used to work for McKinsey. Sure. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is it fits perfectly with what we're talking about. He said, we came out of McKinsey, me and uh, my partners, and we would do these mega, mega deals. And it's like, okay, we wanted to flip the script when we come to now these type of clients and say, let me tell you what we can do for you. We're going to take 75% of our fee and put it on the back end after we deliver these results mm. to you, which is saving you 25% or increasing your revenue by 25%. And, yeah. and in that realm, they're like, wait a minute, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And we're going to take our fee after you get that savings that flips the script. Well, when yeah. you are having as an advisor calling up that CPA going, please, sir, may I have another and give me a referral? Uh-uh. But when you can say, let me show you something, you probably got a call from a financial planner before I do something so completely different. And here's what it looks like. Now it's almost like the jaw drops. It goes, okay, you've earned the right to buy me a coffee or tell me more. I like how this sounds. You're flipping the script. In a genuine way. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. You're showing a CPA, not, Hey, I'm going to bring you a client. You can charge a thousand dollars for their company tax returns. You're saying, what if instead of charging a thousand dollars for a client, you're charging $10,000 for yeah. a client for and the same client pay it. And they're happy, and they're to, happy pay to pay it because pay it. Why? of the value. Yeah. Because of the value. Yeah. So now I can show you how to improve your average revenue per client and deliver more value to a client. It's that kind of like bolting like on good... bolting on a whole entire division of your CPA firm without you having to lift a finger or hire people or get the expertise. We'll just kind of align ourselves together and I'll run that for you. And we both share in the revenue in a nice fair split that everyone is happy with compliance wise. Yep. And it's ultimately, it's also, I mean, for the advisor, you know what it does is it significantly increases the credibility, Yeah. right? Because they're working alongside the CPA and other advanced planners. They don't have to focus necessarily on the sale or on the transaction because when you bring value and you do planning that other advisors can't do, you just get the business. I have this term in our community. People use the hashtag. It's, you know, it came along for the ride. They're yeah. like, I never thought I'd get a $1.2 million rollover that came along for the ride. But what we did is we focused on the CPA. We did advanced planning. We saved the client 700 grand in taxes. And at the end of the day, they were like, you know, I should probably roll this over. And he's like, great, we could handle that for you. Yeah, or gotcha. they do a buy-sell agreement. Who's going to, you know, you got to fund the buy-sell. Who's going to do the insurance? It's not going to yeah. be the guy or gal that didn't even know what you did or yep. what a buy-sell is or how you put it in place. Or going to Google. Or going to Google. No, yeah. it's, you know, the value's there. And so the, the, the opportunities are pretty much endless. You know, um, and also it's it's very similar. Like I know we've used the you've used these examples before too. Like in the medical industry, like you mm -hmm. know, hey, you, you're the you're the surgeon. You're not going to go take the blood pressure. You've got the nurses to do that. You've got the well. If you're a general practitioner and the patient comes in and they need some high level specific surgery. You're not going to go to that surgeon and hear the reason why you need it and then how they can do it and then price bash them and go, yeah, but I want a better deal. You're going, <laughs> yes, please. Can I, can I get some of your time and can you do this? That's how I'm envisioning this relationship when the clients are seeing this level of value being created for them and they're going, wow, um, thank you, uh, Mr. or Ms. CPA. You used to just do my taxes, but now we just had this meeting with the, the CPA, the financial planner. You brought in a state planning attorney. You brought in this, you brought in this, and wow, you laid out a picture that's kind of exciting. And so, wow, what's the next step? Am I able to participate and do this? You know, they're now almost asking you to do business with them. And it's, Getting back to that flipping the script, it's that positioning because you're aligning with those powerful strategic alliances. Hundred percent, yeah. I mean, it's just it, it. And as you describe it, I get a little smile on my face because it's like it's fun. You know, yeah. it's it's unique and it's fun, and especially for the advisors or the CPAs listening. Like, you know, you, you got four hundred clients already. You, do you like working with all of them? Do you yeah. have enough time to build a deep relationship? Do you have enough time to do this? Like truly proactive and holistic planning? And usually the answer is no, not for right. 400. But you know, the good news is 
if you can change the revenue model, then you can go from 400 to 100 and still increase your overall you know, revenue and profit. Have you ever done any um, reading or listening to Jay Abraham? Yes. Okay. So I, I have as well, and I'm literally going through this course that he did, uh, put out at the end of 2022. And it was just really a great, great course. And one of the things he keeps talking about, one of his tenants is, you know, hey, when you have a client, we teach you how to get more um, you know, like revenue from that client and then get more revenue, more times from that client and then getting mm-hmm. them to buy again. Well, all of that's great. But one of the things he said is you need to find out when you bring on that new client, um, what were, what else do they need in addition to that? Mm-hmm. And then if they do not choose you, who do they choose? What are, what are the extra things? So as an example, you know, Hey, I go to, uh, the, uh, I need to gain 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds. So I'm going to go find a diet plan. Yeah. But you also need to have maybe some apparel, maybe some nutrition, maybe some supplements, mm-hmm. all of those things. Well, in this realm that we're talking about here, these clients are simply tax prep type client and the CPA is trading dollars for hours. And at some point Mm -hmm. there's only so many hours they have and they go nuts. If you say, how about 600 clients? They're like, stop. But if that (laughs) same client was a business owner and they also needed all the things that now we've been talking about and that CPA goes, wait a minute, you're saying that you could handle and we could do. And now I'm making two, three times the revenue or more. And I'm not delivering on that, but I look like the rock star. Mm -hmm. In reality, Mm -hmm. that CPA is the one controlling the relationship. And when they feel comfortable moving ahead with this kind of a thing, boy, that client feels like they are the ultimate because it's like, thank you for bringing this together. And they're just sitting on the sideline, smiling in the boardroom going, yep, that's how we uh, treat our clients. So I just think that relationship is so powerful. And it makes me think this, if a CPA was listening to this going, well, where's the catch? Because it's like every single green light, green light. Yes, yes, yes. So where's the, what's the downside in this for the CPA? Change. That's the yeah. biggest catch yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. for both the advisor and the CPA is understanding that they will have to change the normal way they've approached clients and done business. Yeah. And change is uncomfortable. And so what we try to do is help them to understand. I mean, there's a couple ways we can change. You know, we can we can literally package up and sell clients, but more likely what we will do is we will put up a strategic plan in place where we'll say, you know, every Monday we're going to approach two clients with the new value proposition. Here's the email templates, here's the phone scripts, here's the meeting presentation, here's the pricing. Every Monday, boom, 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 boom. Every time we get a new A client, we're going to let go of two D and F clients. Mm, You know, we we fire two, we get one, we fire two. And so you do that over the period of 90 days. And then we reflect on the progress. We do some refining. You go another 90 days and refine, reflect. You do that for a year or two and you start seeing interesting, like our... There's baby steps, but there's progress being made. And a lot of these, you know, firms, you know, you've been doing something the same way for 10 years. You're not going to change it in one month. You got to, you got to be pretty intentional and strategic about that. So, you know, we try to be um, upfront about the fact that transitions and change do take time. We need to, we need to be good partners in this. We need to be persistent, but also patient and aware of the fact Mm -hmm. that advisors and, and CPAs even if they want the same thing at the end of the day, you know, create more value for clients, increase revenue, have a better work-life balance. They, they are approaching it from two different mindsets with two different sets of language. That is, I think at the end of the day, the, the value we can try to help is kind of bridging the difference between those two, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus type of thinking. Um, One of my partners at elite resource teams an accountant by background he grew his accounting firm using the principles of the team-based model, sold it for $45 million, and he helps facilitate the training for the CEPAs, the accountants that mm. our advisors are working with yeah. to try to kind of help navigate that difference in personalities he knows and languages. The, the lingo and he knows how they feel and their background. He's got that hate. little secret yeah. handshake, right? Yep. We always tease about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, Exactly. Well, I tell you what, I think we've laid out some really powerful concepts and I really appreciate your time coming on. If someone is listening to this going, tell me more, you know, I don't, I'm not going to commit, not going to, you know, say, let's jump in with both feet, but tell me more. What's the best way that they can learn more about how uh, financial advisors and CPAs can work together with a proven blueprint strategy, everything that you can come alongside them and help them with. Sure. So if they're 
just looking passively. They want to find out a little bit more information. Uh, elite Resource Team is the name of my company. So Elite RT, as in Elite Robert Tom dot com. Um, also, YouTube done, you know, dozens and dozens of free videos on there where I, I dive into this in more detail because it is it is my passion project and it's uh, I think early early. So I like to think we're ahead of the curve a bit. Yeah. Um, and then if they want to email for any additional information, support at elitert.com. Well, Anton, thank you so much for coming on. It's just been a real pleasure talking with you, and I appreciate your time. Likewise. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.